Welcome to this edition of Sprout Central. I'm Dennis Tynes. I'm your host, and I'm excited about today's show. If you're an artist or you know an artist and you want to make a living with, with your art, we have a great guest on the show today. Today we have Frederick Menino from Bienville Oyster Company and Ballo Menino Designs, and he's, he makes a living doing his art. It's a great business. And we also have our co-host, Joey, on the show today. It's great to be here, Dennis. It's always a beautiful day in the studio. It is. It's a beautiful day outside, too. How was your weekend? The weekend was great. You know, we have great weather. Uh, I got to go to the beach, spend some time down there with a the girlfriend, so it was nice. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, I noticed they're cleaning up all the tropical storm stuff, and there's big piles of things everywhere, and they're hauling it off. But there were a lot of people on the beach this weekend. It was crowded. So th this week, we're continuing our series on how to how to start your business or turn your passion into your income? Is that, what are we calling this thing? Turn your passion into your career. Turn your passion into your career. But what we're really doing right now is we're going through the beginning processes of writing your business plan. That's the first step. And we're gonna kinda go back through a little bit of it today through some of the definitions of, you know, because we're wrapping up our first section on the business plan where we where we, we're gonna move into a different phase of the business plan after this. So we're gonna have a couple of shows where we do some review. Um, what, what, what are the new sections that we're working on right now, Joey? We so have gonna, some new stuff? We do, we have a couple of new sections to go over. We have the company summary and the company ownership. Okay, so we're gonna to get to that in just a few minutes. What, so we started out with ideas, right? The first thing we did was, you know, what is your idea for a business? and and then we told everybody, you know, if you take your idea and turn it into your mission, right? And we've had some guests on the show that have given us kind of some ideas for, for businesses. Then what was the next thing after mission? So mission statement? Right, we had our mission statement and then we had keys to success, which was the, uh, the things that you were gonna need to accomplish or achieve to ensure that your business was gonna be successful. So it could be something like a location or a certain amount of sales goals and stuff like that. Right. And then we moved on to objectives, which is more concrete. I don't, I don't know. It is. It's, it, concrete is right. It's, objectives are taking your keys to success and coming up with a strategy to make that happen. So your objectives is, is, is the strategy for success. And um, so today we're going to move on to another thing that lenders think are, uh, find really important, and that's they want to know who they're dealing with and what kind of company they're dealing with. And so to wrap up the first section of your business plan, we're going to do, we're going to show you about how to write a company summary and what else are we writing? Company summary and? Company ownership. Company ownership, simple stuff. Clarence, can we put up the company uh, summary definition and we'll talk about that for a minute? All right, this is straight from my business plan program. In this section, we, we more clearly define exactly how the company's owned. Is there more than one owner? That's really important. They want to know everybody. Who, who owns this company? If so, what percentage of the company is held by each owner and how it's owned? Businesses can be owned in a variety of ways. You can have limited liability companies, corporations, or you can just be Joseph Simpson doing business as whatever it is you're doing and, and file it all on your personal tax returns. Okay, Clarence, thank you. Take that down. So, Joey, did you write a, a company summary at all for your company? I know you're working on a business plan still, right? Right, yeah, I did. I, I wrote the company summary on the computer over at Sprout Central. Oh, so yeah. I don't have that on me because it's a little bit more in depth. Oh, that's right. You were over at Sprout Central on the Sprout computer. Tell the folks oh, about was. that. So the Sprout, uh, Sprout computer over at Sprout Central has got that business plan program on it that you can go through that has all the different things that we've been doing here. And we just got a new monitor for it, so it's got That's right. nice new graphics. And you can just sit there, you can write your business plan and have a mentor help you write your business plan right there on the spot. Right. But you gotta schedule it, because we only have one computer so far, but we're working on that. Right. All right, so we wrote, you wrote your company summary and, and on the Sprout computer. Let's go over that next week. Did you do anything else? You wrote your company ownership. Company ownership, company summary. I put in the mission statement, the keys to success, the objectives. Did a little bit of the numbers. All right, we started all the way. We're going to get to numbers. It's going to be two weeks before we get onto the numbers part of the business plan. We're going to do a review next week. Mm -hmm. But uh, so I, you know, I, I was going to tell you about my weekend. I, I worked in the Sprout Garden this weekend. 
Yeah, tell, tell the people, we were talking about that earlier, tell the people about the Sprout Garden. I know. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's really neat. We, you know, we grow a lot of different things. We have a, a satsuma tree and a lemon tree and a, a fig tree and some things like that. But we use these things and we use seeds to make sprouts and those sprouts we give away. But we give it away to people and give them the opportunity to find out more about the Sprout Community Fund and what we do there which is raise money and then lend the money to people in the community that need help. For example, you know, if you had a, a business owner that, that needs a, a, their restaurant, the cooler went out and they need a new restaurant, well, the Sprout Community Fund can step right in and help them with that. So we, we did some tree planting and, some, and, and we're raising some garden, you know, some vegetables and fruits and things in the garden that we're gonna be giving away later on. And we'll, see, we'll have some Sprout Garden events Hashtag Sprout Garden is the, the, the way to find out more about that. You can just search on Instagram for hashtag Sprout Garden and see what, you know, what's going on in the Sprout Garden and follow us on Instagram. That, that's, a, that, that's a thing, Instagram. Now, do you have the Instagram, Joey? I actually don't have Instagram. You I'm going to have to start it up because I'm going to be doing a lot of stuff that requires more pictures. But I never really take pictures of anything, so uh, I'm always the one that goes on vacation. I went to uh, Georgia twice last year and I didn't I didn't take any pictures the entire time uh, my profile picture is the same it's been the same for about six months now uh, I really don't take pictures when I'm out so Instagram was never something that I ever really used uh, I usually use Facebook for memes it's really I just well it's a great way to tell people about your business and get your but Instagram's a good vehicle for businesses yeah my little really brother is. uses it very effectively because he takes pictures of the things that he has for sale at his store and he can do live sales with people because they can you know message him on Instagram messenger and then he can use the phone and go around and show people the different gems and crystals and stuff and he gets good angles and you can see the light play in them and all that different stuff so he uses it a lot and I figure when I start doing jewelry and, and silversmithing and different things like that I'll need to use Instagram more because I'll be taking a lot more pictures. Absolutely. All right, so we're continuing with writing the business plan. The first big step in, in starting a business is writing your plan. And we're, like you said, we're talking about company ownership and company summary. So which one are we on now, Joey? We company were, summary? Let's do the company summary. There it is, company summary. And the company summary talk about how the company was started. Think of it as introducing your company to someone. How long have you been in business? What is the main company address? Are there any other locations? If this is a new business, will you be starting from a home office? Who owns the company? Is that ownership shared? Those are all perfect questions right there. You see, and, and that's exactly what the lender wants to know. So when you're writing your business plan, you're telling your story, and at the end of the first section, you're gonna say, and this company is owned by, and you're gonna explain exactly who you are and what percentage of the company you own and all those types of things. And that gives the lender an idea of who they're dealing with. But, you know, we, you know, we represent a wide variety of lenders and it's just, you know, it's a very smooth transition where you're, if you're dealing with us, you're dealing with some big lenders. And that's one of the first things they ask me. They say, Dennis, who are we dealing with here? They want to know. Right, so in that company summary kind of takes everything that you've already been put into the business plan, which is the mission statement and the keys to success and the objectives, and instead of being in kind of bullet point style, it's more of a, a paragraph, like a story that you're telling them that tells them, well, this is, you know, the company is XYZ LLC, and it's going to be doing this, this, and this right here at this location, and if the location is one of your keys to success, then it can be explained, you know, right next door to so-and-so and so-and-so, which does this, that, and the other. And then it also tells you a little bit about what they're going to be doing there and how it's going to be successful and then who owns it, which then leads into the next part of the business plan, which is the company ownership. And that goes in detail more about who you are. And do we have the slide for that one? Are we going to yeah, let's take that slide back up there if we haven't. Company, what, company what, ownership. Company ownership. Company ownership. Clarence, we have time for that still? Awesome. So this is where we define exactly how the company is owned. And they want to know who are the owners, and they, you know, they underwrite. They look into who these owners are and what their credit scores are and things like that, and also what percentage and and whether it's a privately held or a publicly held company. As you know, we usually deal, deal with privately held companies. But right, publicly held though that does that does happen every so often. Right, we have in fact we have one publicly held client right now. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. 
that's kind of wrapping up the whole, the first section of your business plan. You start out with your idea, and then you work through all the way down to 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 writing a little summary about what type of company you do. And once and we're going to go, we're going to review all of that again next week, and and go through your business plan. We're going right. to go through those steps in your business plan. So if you need to come back to the Sprout computer. Please do. In fact, schedule something because you know there's to. only one computer. Did right, we talk about right. that already? There's one computer. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm going to make okay. sure that I have the time to go in there and uh, finish it up, wrap it up. So I'm looking forward to getting it done, getting funded. Excellent. So we're talking about writing business plans and we're talking about ideas for businesses and we're bringing in people who have experience in doing those things. For example, artists who are, who are making a living selling their art. Uh, we have actors and, 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 and movie people coming up who are making a living in the movie business. And today, if you're not watching this show, you're going to miss out on an artist who is making his living doing artwork and has done it for a long time. He's got a lot of great tips and information on how that works, some of the complications and, and problems that, that come up when you're when you're you know, starting your business and things like that. He's been through, and he's going to tell us how to avoid some of the pitfalls of being in the art business Which and, is great. and art manufacturing. Yeah, that's business. cool. Yeah. So we've had somebody to come on to tell us a little bit about how to get through the music industry, and now we're going to have somebody tell you how to navigate the art world. Right. So there's a lot of really good information on this show for people who are looking to make their passion into their career. Absolutely. So we'll be right back with Frederick Menino from Bienville Oyster Company and Vallo Menino Designs right after this. Money Focus here on Ocean 7. Justin O'Keefe, financial advisor, over 30 years in the business. If a person comes to you and says, Please, I want to make the right investment, not the wrong investment. Where do you take them? Well, safety is the key. Yeah, we're, we want to help them get a better return, return on their money and don't lose their money. That's the key. And the older a person is, the, you got to be careful. You don't want to lose your nest egg. That's right. The less risk you want to have, the older you get. Okay. Thank you, Justin. That's Money Focus here on Ocean 7, Mondays at 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. Lil Market on Belande Street, right off Government Street, downtown Ocean Springs, now offering curbside service deliveries and home deliveries. Call 228-300-4545 or go online at iHeartBagel.com. Sliced deli meats and cheeses from Boar's Head. Great freezer meals for easy family dinners. The greatest homemade bagels. 228-300-4545 or iHeartBagel.com. Lil Market, Ocean Springs. Dr. Timmons, tell us about your practice in downtown Ocean Springs. Well, we've been here since 2006. Uh, we're a digital dental practice where we do digital impressions and Invisalign, uh, same day implant crowns and guided implant surgery, et cetera. So a person can literally come in and have the implants done in one day? In one day. Um, sometimes people break a tooth off at the gum line, unfortunately, and we're able to extract that tooth and place the implant and place a crown in one two-hour visit. Okay, what is the contact information? What's the most convenient way for people to reach out and make an appointment and, and get in contact with your, your dental clinic? Uh, on Facebook, on our Facebook page, or TimmonsFamilyDental.com. Thanks for being with us today on Ocean 7. Thank you. Edward St. Pei with Nathan Prescott Hi. from Law Focus. Hello, Nathan. Hey. Law Focus, we have it every Wednesday at 10.30 a.m. and then again, a repeat performance at 6 p.m. Sure. So tell us, what is Law Focus all about? Well, Law Focus is sort of self-explanatory and it is a show focused on the law, but an ancillary sort of arm to that is that Law Focus involves the law in you. It involves how the law affects your day-to-day -day life. Through the shows, we've addressed the Landlord-Tenant Act, we've addressed trademarks, copyrights, constitutionality of issues, criminal issues, and even current events that exist in the law with different types of things that come up. So anything that affects, that involves the law and affects you is fair game for Law Focus, and we're proud of that. We try to put out new product a good bit. 
Well, it's a, a, a situation that affects everyone. The law affects everybody, and we're happy to have this program. Thank you for being with us every week on Law Focus. That's Law Focus every Wednesday at 10.30 a.m. and again at 6 p.m. on Ocean 7. Thank you. And we're back, and just like I promised, we have in the studio today Frederick Menino. Frederick, welcome to the show, man. Hey, hey Dennis. Dennis. How are you? Great. How are you doing? I am doing well. I had a great weekend and uh, enjoying doing the show today. Um, so, Frederick, we're, this show, Sprout Central, and you're familiar with Sprout, is, is a show designed to help people who want to add an additional income stream or they want to start their own business. Right now we're working through the process of writing a business plan and bringing in people who have business ideas just to give people examples of what's out there and what's available. And I know there are, I know a lot of artists personally who want to make a living practicing their craft, who make beautiful art and would love to just make a living doing that, but it's not easy, is it, uh, to do that, to make a living as an artist? Uh, no, <laughs> it's not easy. It just depends on a lot. You know, it depends on what kind of art you're doing and what kind of processes you have to go about to do it. You know, it's one thing for a painter to find a place to paint and quietly toil about painting. But, you know, we're potters and uh, kilns break and things blow up and uh, there's a lot of different set of problems that can come with that. But. That's what we're doing. Right now, I see you, you know, you've got videos on where you're doing unique painted, you know, platters and you have a, 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 a variety of product lines. But there was one time when you, you know, what, what was it like in the beginning for you? How did you get started doing this? That's a gr great question. You know, uh, I was making furniture a long time ago uh, with a friend and uh, shown in a gallery and it came to pass that uh, my soon to be eventually wife, and I uh, started visiting one another. She was in Austin, I was in uh, New Orleans, and uh, she moved home and I was looking at the pottery and I said, man, I can sell this, I, I know it, you know, and uh, at that time it was earthenware, it was all Mayolica, you know, which is an old school uh, Portuguese, Italian, think Mexican, Spanish, that kind of look, you know, and uh, we made our own glazes because I eventually left the furniture and got into her with the pottery and uh, and that's how it started, you know, and eventually we started doing uh, shows like the you know, Ocean Springs has the Peter Anderson shows. Well, it turns out, you know, every town has a, a show. So and that's how you started the sales process was going to shows, putting up a tent. Yeah, oh yeah, there was no, there's, unfortunately there was no business plan, there was no model, there was no, uh, we had, we were an unguided missile. Right. Is what we were. Uh, driving to D.C. or Virginia, you know, Virginia Beach, uh, Key Biscayne, uh, God, uh, not Jekyll Island, St. Simon's Island, we did a lot of shows, Jacksonville, uh, Ocean Springs, but uh, and it's a lot of fun, you know. I was going to say, that sounds like a lot of fun, a great life just on the road with your wife and a family business. Uh, when you're young. When you're young, <laughs> right. Uh, and, and, and out there traveling the world. I bet that you've got some interesting stories from the road during those days. Anything come to mind that's PG related? PG, PG. Um, <laughs> uh, we can go PG on this. We used to, we used to have a dachshund that uh, we would take with us because they're you know manageable. And uh, right. we took the dachshund to this, I think it was a show in West Point and this guy, you know, we're setting up, the dog's hard to watch and, and uh, the dog ran over and got away from us and uh, went and soiled someone's work there. And I and I, I was like, oh my God, you know, was like, he started to do this and I'm like calling his name and I took my shirt off and trying to, you know, work it all out. And then finally, you know, we did. But, uh, you know, I, I realized at that point we can't bring the dog anymore. That's, that's out. And it was like, I'd rather bring a tiger than a, <laughs> a dachshund with me anywhere. But uh, yeah, that's, that was, that was one of the times. And w w so when you guys were traveling on the road, what were you selling? You were selling the pottery then? Then we were selling only the Mayolica, yeah. uh, and which was when Candace started, she would just paint designs. She'd take a bamboo brush and just lay the brush down 
and make whatever pattern the brush laying down onto the onto the surface of the clay pot looked like. And then she would, you know, maneuver them around, change them, band them. You know, on a banding wheel, she would you know turn the pot and drag the brush and. Uh, Eventually, she started getting into flowers. She saw that the brush would mimic a, the way a flower looked, and then that evolved to her. She, my wife has an art degree from Southern. I have one from she's a very talented artist. I have one from Ole Miss. Her work in a minute. Yeah, she's ex incre incredible. And uh, and one thing led to another. The designs led to the flowers, and the flowers led to the bugs, like the dragonfly. And then that was wide open. After that, it was everything that swims. And the rivers, bayous, uh, the Gulf, you know, uh, we did uh, backsplashes, sinks, we did tile surrounds for showers, uh, foyers for houses. Uh, oh, so you have some works that are in some of the, the buildings around, mm -hmm. around the coast, don't you? Candace does, yeah. I, oh, yeah. I set Candace the tile, she painted them. She painted yeah. them. Where, what, where, where is some of the work where people can go see it if they want it? There's, there's some, uh, I think it's a McAllister's now. Uh, in Ocean Springs, uh, we did. She she drew floor to ceiling tile murals of being underwater in both bathrooms, with a pelican between the two. That's probably eight by eight feet in tile. And uh, we did some houses. I think we uh, we did the uh, sink at the um, visitor center or whatever it is at the depot here. The uh, what is That's that? right, at the Biloxi Visitor Center. No, the one Ocean in Springs. Ocean Springs. It's not Ocean Cecilia. It's Cynthia. Um, those folks, sure. I don't know. You got to go in there, uh, anyway. But okay, so, so you have works. Uh, let's see some of the some of the. Do you have any artwork from Candace? Some of the pottery that you got. I brought one plate. I can't oh, I can't keep up. Uh, keep it in. That's a perfect example. Uh, I have several pieces of this, and that's a great one. The crab. She does a lot of different things, but the crab, the speckled trout, the dragonfly. Those are my really my favorites. That's a beautiful piece. It, Thank you. You know, I, I call her um, my Beatle because uh, if you ever heard, you know, you've heard all the Beatles songs, and if you ever heard one that was never released, and and you heard it, you would know right away who did it. And Candace developed her style over the course of time. You know, you can see the the older pieces; they're kind of primitive. You know, I want to hold your hand kind of stuff, and then later, it's you know, the the you know. Very refined. She takes a lot longer to paint things today than she used to. But it's absolutely beautiful. It is. It's stunning. It's Thank you beautiful. very much. And I'm, you're right. I'm a huge fan. When you see it, me too. I, I obviously I have quite a few pieces. Have collected them over the years. So, okay, we're, we're you're selling pottery. You're, I mean, you're selling the, the original artwork in the pottery form. And then you kind of you're an entrepreneur though. You're the business side of this thing, right? A family business where you're the business side. And you've come up with some other product lines and other things along the way too to enhance the business, right? I have. Um, she would uh, call me the idea man sometimes. I yeah. don't know if that was a compliment or a uh, <laughs> disparaging. Uh, but uh, most recently, we came up with the Bienville Oyster Company, uh, and it was a. I was hoping it was a way for her to do less. Every one of the pieces, like the crab plate I just showed you, she paints by hand. Nobody helps her. They're done one at a time by her versus people that, you know, employ small armies of people to paint things for them. Um, even Tiffany, jeweler, you know, we studied Tiffany in school and he would come up with, you know, a beautiful ring or something and then employ his artisans to make those rings, you know. Right. I mean, but he, he made the first one. Candace would make every one of them. She's just not letting anybody in. And so we did this Bienville Oyster things, I thought, a way to get the, you know, the burden off of her and to just make something that's not, doesn't need to be painted, doesn't need, you know, a whole lot of expression, just dip it, you know, dip it in the glaze and fire it, and uh, that was the plan. So Bienville Oyster Company, obviously, obviously it's not a, an oyster harvesting company. Let's, do you have a, a, an example of that? I have some. Uh, that's, a, that's a funny thing you just said, uh, it's not an oyster company. Uh, one of our... Uh, you know, there is a new company, um, that, that I, I follow on the on the social media called French Hermit Oyster Company on the coast. That's French Hermit. They're, they're raising oysters on the coast, and I'm not sure of the details, but I'm definitely interested in finding out more about it. I know about the French Hermit. If you go to my website, uh, or maybe it's the Facebook page, I don't know which, but uh, BeAnvilOyster.com, I've got a picture of the Hermit of Deer Island. 
Ah. And he and he was a Frenchman. You're um, an expert on the local lore, Frederick. Uh, I enjoy our conversation. Even the font, even the font on the bag, I borrowed uh, from the Biloxi Fire Department. Uh, uh. I just uh, loved the uh, the time, the old timey look. And anyway, this is what you get in the bag. You get an oyster shell looking thing. It's not really an oyster shell at all. It's a flameware shell. Flameware is a type of clay body. Um, there's earthenware, which is the really low fire stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, think of your red clay fire uh, flower pots. Um, then you got stoneware, a lot higher temperatures. Then you got porcelain, and flameware is about as hot as you can get. And uh, you can put this right on the grill, go get some oysters from the grocery store in a tub, throw them in there with some butter and garlic, cheese, spinach, whatever you want to do. I've got a lot of recipes on the on the website and uh, a lot of videos from Emeril. And he, uh, you cook what you want. You know, there's a Thai flavored kind of thing if you want to go that way, or there's the traditional Look Rockefeller. At one of those. Uh, yeah, please. These are, and it's got your little stamp on the back. Each one's individually stamped. That's beautiful. Some of them are brown. Toss your oyster in there, a little lime, some Corona, and throw it on the grill or whatever you like to put on your oyster. And uh, you can set this on the fire and. It won't break, right? No, it doesn't break. You, you uh, cook with tongs, you know, it's, yeah. the fire, everything's, you know, hot as can be. And so you're moving the tongs around, the stuff's flaming up like it does at the restaurants. And, and when they're done, you put them in a tray and you've got a great, you know, appetizer for your, yourself, your family, your friends, whatever you're doing. That's a great idea. And it's a neat, it's a neat little thing to, you know, it's kind of a, a, a art in daily use type of thing. It's beautiful and and uh, you can use it. It's kind of like a coffee cup. And so far, Candace is uh, making each one by hand. I, I cannot get her to let go of the reins of anything, but uh, eventually we would like to try to figure out a way to, to get these produced in a quantity that is substantial sure. and, and reach the larger market, you know, because there's a big market out there that likes grilled oysters. And you're a Sprout client, and Sprout's helping you to do that, aren't you? They are. You are. You are, Dennis. Excellent. I'm excited about your, your growth, and we're working on that. So you can buy these things, if, and, and to do that, you go on to BeanvilleOyster.com. We have right. the website. So BeanvilleOyster.com will give you a call and order a set of those if you want to put, you know, grill some oysters out. I think it's the perfect thing for that. Also, if, if you're interested in the artwork, you, you, you can buy that. Do you... Yeah, you all that stuff's website. available you at the uh, Allo Menino website for that. Yep, uh, those orders are really kind of phone in to me, and we talk to people. Yeah. I talk to them directly. Take uh, direct, right? Because I don't want to get people, uh, you know, waiting for Candace. You know, she sure. she is still an artist, and she still operates at her own speed. So you, you help know? with the quality control. Well, I, yeah, I try. All right. I try. Look, we're going to run out of time here in just a second. Okay. So I'm really happy you came. Thank you, Dennis. I'm happy friend. to be here. I appreciate you supporting the, the new show and our new venture here at Sprout. And uh, just folks, if, if you're interested in Bienville Oyster Company or Valo Menino Design, some of this beautiful artwork, please get in touch with Frederick and, uh, and order something, right? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Uh, they, they won't spoil. There's nothing alive in the bag. So just uh, place your order and, uh, you know, Father's Day, whatever you want. Uh, okay. It's coming up. Well, all right. Well, I hope you get a lot of feedback on that. So. Thanks again for being here. We're gonna we're gonna have another show next week, and next week we're gonna we're coming up with ideas, and next week we're gonna bring in some film professionals. Starting next week, we have Jonah Monet, and we're gonna talk about how to make a living in the film industry. So don't miss that on the next episode of Sprout Central. Watching WXVO Television, Ocean 7, Pascagoula, Ocean Springs, Gautier, Mississippi.